Good morning. Welcome back after your weekend. Uh, hopefully it was good for you. You had a nice little bit of rest. I know it's Wednesday, but whatever. So we are going to continue on with uh, square roots. So if you remember, that is what a square root is. Uh, you, all right, maybe not. Okay. I kind of like this one. Not sure if it is a shoe or it is the square root of the answer. Okay. So if you notice this, obviously it's Vans, but when you get to um, a calculator in probably algebra one, so when you're a sophomore, um, one of the things that it's going to do, the higher end calculators, when you type something in, you use the previous answer and then do some manipulation. So that's where that comes from. Okay. So we're going to take the next step into square roots today. So if you remember last time we did, uh, what is the square root of a nice perfect square of like five, I'm not sorry, five, but 25, um, five, square root of 16, four, so on and so forth. There are a couple in your work that were a little bit more challenging and you could use a calculator. Uh, I'm going to go through a little bit of that with you again today. So if you look at this one, you notice that it is a fraction. Okay, so it's the square root of nine over 16. And yes, you can do that. Now there's two ways that we can look at this. One way, and this is the first way we're gonna look at it, is you know, you look at the square root of each individual part of the fraction. So what's the square root of the numerator? What's the square root of the denominator? Most of the time, that's the easiest way. Not all the time, we'll see that in a little bit. So again, what's the square root of three? What time, I'm sorry, what's the square root of nine? What times what? What times itself? It gives you nine. Obviously it's three. What times itself gives you 16? Obviously it's four. So nine sixteenths is three fourths squared. Okay. So the square root of nine sixteenths would therefore be three fourths. Not so, not so bad. Well, let's look at this one, 2.25. Hmm, okay. Now you might know that 225 is the square is the square of 15. Okay. If you don't, not that big of a deal. Just go to a calculator. Uh, this is just a calculator on Google. Super easy. Uh, the way you do it, you just hit the square root button. Okay. And then you just type in your number and you're good and golden. Okay. This is asking you what is the square root of 2.25? Oh, there it is, 1.5. Oh, by the way, you can do this on multiple different calculators. Um, you can do it on your iPhone, but with your iPhone, you have to take it and you have to take it from landscape, from portrait to landscape mode. So you got to turn it sideways and you get a whole, duff, whole nother set of functions that you can use. Um, you know, different online calculators will have this. Uh, four functions might have this, the square root button. They might not. looks a little bit different. doesn't have the full square root sign. That's somewhat common with some of these calculators. It's just... Well, you have to deal with. All right, so we know that 1.25, okay, is the square of 1.5. So 1.5 squared is 2.25. So therefore, the positive and the negative square roots of 2.25 are negative 1.5, 1.5. So like we had said before, um, you, know, you can take the square root of the numerator and then the square root of the denominator. So the square root of the numerator it's pretty easy. It's just one. The square root of one is one. The square root of ten of a hundred is ten. So it is asking us to take the negative of that square root, or negative one tenth. This one again. Now it's asking us for the positive and the negative. So here we're going to take the square root of the numerator and the square root of the denominator, independent of one another. So the square root of four is two. The square root of 25 is 5. So the square root of 4 25ths is 2 fifths. And if uh, positive and negative 2 fifths. So we write this as 2 fifths and negative 2 fifths. Both of them are solutions to this equation. Now we come here. Square root of 12.25. Again, this is not something you can do in your head really easily. Go to your calculator. All right. Hit your radicand, I'm sorry, hit your radical sign, 12.25, and that happens to be 3.5, so it's just 3.5. Calculators make your life a lot easier. And this one, what you want to do is you want to take the quotient first, and then take the square root of that, because square root of 56, I'm sorry, the square root of 54, I don't know what it is. Square root of 6, I don't know either. Okay, this is somewhere between 2 and 3. This is somewhere between uh, 7 and 8. I don't know. 
doesn't matter. So 56 divided by, so 54 divided by 6 is 9, so the square root of 9, does not look like a 9, is 3. So now we're going to do a little bit with some calculations. All right, so we have 5 times the square root of 36 plus 7. Hmm, all right, well, we can solve this because this is just a multiplication problem. This means 5 times the square root of 36. That's no different than doing like, 5 times 3 plus 8. Well, you do 3 plus 8 first, multiply that by 5. This is the same thing, it's just the square root. So we know that the square root of 36 is 6, so this is really 5 times 6, then you add 7 to that. So that's just 30 plus 7, or 37. Not awful. Now, this is where I said when you're looking at the square root um, of a fraction, sometimes you can look at it as the square root of the numerator and then the square root of the denominator, this case, it doesn't really work. Is there a square root of 18? Yes. Okay, what is it? Something miserable to deal with. It's somewhere between 4 and 5. It's probably like 4.2 something, whatever. Square root of 2, yeah, it's like 1.4 something, whatever. Okay, that is not a nice number to deal with. Usually when it's a square root of um, a non-perfect square, we're going to cover that it's a little bit later on. Um, we just use a calculator for it. We usually estimate or round to... Um, a certain place. It could be the whole, the tenths, the hundredths, whatever it happens to be. Um, this right here is an exact. So what we'll do is instead of taking the, new, the square root of each of them, try to figure out what fraction multiplies to get to this, what we're going to do is just do the operation here. So 18 divided by 2 is correct, 9. So this is really 1 quarter plus the square root of 9. Now the square root of 9 is 3. So a quarter plus three is just three and a quarter, okay? So this is the square of a square root. You know what that's like doing? It's like dividing by two and then multiplying by two. Or it's like subtracting by five and then adding by five, right? If you have five and you subtract five and then you add five back to it, what do you have? You have what you started with, it's five, okay? Or 10 or whatever it happens to be. Um, you know, let's say you start with seven, you multiply it by two, you get 14, you divide it by two, you get seven, you start with what you had. So this, basically what we're doing is we're doing the inverse operations. So you're taking 81 and you're taking the square root of 81. Well, fortunately we can calculate this, it's nine. Okay, and then if you square nine, it's 81. But if this was a harder number, you know, obviously you can't necessarily always find the square root of it to have a nice pretty integer. So what you would do is, if you're taking the square of a square root, you're just taking what your radicand is right in here, right? Because if I'm taking the square root of something and then immediately squaring that, I'm right where I started. So this is just 81 minus five and 81 minus five is 76. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a look at um, solving a variable that's squared, all right? And this is going to be a little bit different than what we've done um, with solving other variables in the past. Okay, so now let's look how to solve x squared equals 81. The other one over there said a squared equals 81. Doesn't matter. So the way we would solve this is if we had like 3x equals 18, we would divide both by 3. And the reason with that is, is we're trying to get the coefficient here to be one, okay? Because we're trying to find out what one X is. So this becomes three thirds times X, which is just one X, and then that equals six, okay? How do we get our X squared to be a single X? Well, we have to use an operation. Here, we were multiplying, so we divided, okay? Um, so you use your inverse operation. The only one that's not necessarily an inverse operation is when you can do um, multiplying by the reciprocal to clear out a fraction. So if you had like two thirds X equals 18, right? You can multiply by three halves because again, that's what's gonna get your coefficient to be one or to have one of these X's. Um, so multiplying by the reciprocal works that way, okay? So here, what is my operation I'm doing? I guess it's really not an operation, but what is the math thing I'm doing? Well, I'm squaring something. How do I undo a square? Well, what is a square? something times itself. So I undo a square by taking the square root. 
Okay, yeah, I can do that just like you could add to both sides, subtract to both sides, multiply both sides, divide both sides. I can take the square root of both sides if I need to. I can also square both sides if I have to too. Doesn't matter, okay? So the square root of x squared is just going to be x. Now, here's where it gets slightly different than what we did um, in the previous ones. What is the square root of 81? Well, here's where we use positive and negative, okay? Oops, I hate when that happens. Um, over here, we just tend to keep it the positive because we're just solving for the square root itself, okay? If I take 9, um, take square root of it, it's 3. We Generally, that's the way we accept it. But when we're dealing with a variable, if we're solving for a variable, that's when we look at both the positive and the negative because x can be both positive, in this case, positive 9, or it could be negative 9. Okay, so x equals 9 and negative 9. So now this one, what we can do is we can solve um, for a, but think about it for a second. What am I doing to a? Think about your PEMDAS, order of operations. I'm squaring it and then multiplying it by 3. Well, what I have to do is I have to undo it backwards. So the first thing I do is I divide both sides by 3. Because remember, I'm trying to find out what 1a is. So now, that gives me just a squared on this side. And 48 divided by 3 is 16. Well, now I do what I did on the other side. I take the square root of both sides because to undo a square, I need to take the square root. So the square root of a squared is a because I'm dealing with a variable here. I am focusing on, okay, what numbers will multiply by themselves to give me 16? Well, there are two of them, positive 4 and negative 4. So this just means when we say, I will say sometimes plus or minus 4, that means just that it could be positive 4 and or it could be negative 4. So your answer here is A is 4 and negative 4. Yes, you can have two answers for one variable. It's going to happen more in the future. Oh, my goodness. Look at this one. Not overly complex, not overly complicated. You can do it. Okay, there's no difference between this and what you did before. It's just now you got a square. So what? What am I doing to the variable? Squaring it, multiplying it by 4, subtracting by 6. Remember, we take it apart backwards. We did this in the beginning of the year. So we add 6 to both sides. So 196 equals 4 times b squared. Oh, okay. So I'm squaring it and then multiplying by 4 to take that apart. Divide by 4. b squared equals, uh, well, you can put this into your calculator just in lieu of time. I'll put it up there for you. It's 49. So now we take the square root of both sides okay, to find my variable. So b equals plus or minus 7. So if you've ever seen pictures like this before, they're called crop circles. And people in um, farming countries, sometimes they'll do this. In the 80s, people thought it was like one of those crazy like UFOs came and did it. It was people who did it. So last year, you found the area of a circle, um, and you knew that it was pi times r squared or pi times the radius squared. So now this, this question, instead of us having the radius, we have the area, and we have to go back and find the radius. Not that complicated. It's really just like a fact family to a certain extent. Okay? So we just plug in the numbers that we have, 45,216. That's about equal to 3.14, because we know pi is not exactly 3.14. That's an estimation. It's an approximation, actually, which is why we have that as an approximation. So we go ahead, divide both sides by 3.14. Um, so 45,216 divided by 3.14 is 14,400. So now we take the square root of 14,400, square root of r, so r squared, so r equals the square root of that. That just happens to be... 120. So the radius of the crop circle is about 120 feet. Okay. So good luck today. Please reach out if you have any questions. Um, this is a super important concept because in next class, we're going to use something that is like the ultimate in everybody remembers with geometry. Uh, it's called the Pythagorean theorem. So in order to do that, we need to fully understand square roots, which is why we spent two days on this. So good luck. Reach out if you have any questions. Bye-bye.